Jennifer Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is inspired activism. So there's so much going on in the world and um, it's easy to feel disempowered and, and at the effect of everything that's going on. And I just wanna talk about how we can reclaim our sovereignty and, and our, our sense of, of empowerment through inspired activism. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But before we get started, let's just take a couple minutes to get present. And let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen just flowing into your lungs, flooding your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing life and vitality. And as you exhale, exhale any stress or any tension. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose. Hold it in this time. Imagine brilliant, bright light just lighting up every molecule, every electron, electrifying, energizing, and bringing that energy throughout your body, your being, and beyond, connecting you with the world. And as you exhale, exhale any stress, any remaining tension. And now let's just take a moment to press our palms together, softly, 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 rub your fingers against your palms, feel the deliciousness of that tickling and tingling sensation, and allow that to bring you present to right here, right now, in this physical experience. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, today's topic, inspired activism. So one of the things that I talk with my clients a lot about, and one of the biggest things, most important things that <clears throat> I am an advocate for and, and a staunch supporter of is, is assisting people to find their purpose. And in the, um, in the quest for our purpose, and meaning and vision and, and all the things that really give us focus and magic and direction in, in our lives. One of the things that is a clue to discovering this purpose is what is a question that I ask, which is what breaks your heart? And the things that break our hearts are the things that we often feel completely helpless in the face of, that we feel completely disempowered by. And that state of helplessness and hopelessness and disempowerment is crippling in life. And so when we find something that is absolutely heartbreaking, wrenching, um, then that's a really powerful clue <clears throat> to something that will give us meaning and purpose in life. So I have a very dear friend who lives not far from where I live. And she, like me, is an animal lover. And she has this beautiful garden that is kind of a wild garden, almost a little bit forest-like. And this season, she's been being visited by a number of deer. And uh, lots of us are experiencing that uh, the, the proliferation of deer, like lots more deer that, um, that are responding very happily to uh, our COVID crisis or our lack of um, maybe traffic or or whatever, there, there are lots of deer and there are lots of communities that have what they call deer management programs where they do what they call culling the deer, where they kill a lot of deer. And um, they, they have different ways of going about it. They have hunters, uh, they have hunting season, they have 
uh, archers, all different ways of going about it. Now, this friend was having visitations from these deer that she was so enjoying and, and her neighbors were so enjoying. And all of a sudden, the deer were nowhere to be found. And in talking to her neighbor, she discovered that there was a deer management policy uh, in our township. And uh, in our particular township, it, they've designated certain hunting areas where the deer gather and um, they have open season from sometime in November to, some, to early December and then from uh, the end of December through part of January. And I discovered this because I was researching it when I woke up at midnight and um, I was looking for to, to get more information about who to talk to about this and, and also to get more information on how this whole system works. My friend was just completely emotionally devastated and, and was saying, you know, if I had known of this, I would have, I would have stepped between the, the hunter and the deer and um, taken the bullet or the arrow or whatever myself. And um, so I was really haunted by this because, and, I, and I'm not, well, I am a staunch defender of animal rights and, and I am, I do happen to be vegan and I have been vegetarian for years and have moved, moved more and more toward being vegan as, as time has gone by. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't understand a lot of things that human beings do. And this is the case with my friend as well. But anyway, I was looking to see if there is a humane approach to deer management because lots and lots of communities see deer as a problem rather than as part of nature that we get to live in concert with. And um, so what I found was there was a whole, a whole big thing from the Humane Society. One of the big reasons that people, people uh, feel justified in uh, killing off part of the deer population is to minimize the number of deer so that it would eliminate Lyme disease. And, and what I learned was that's actually, first of all, it's a misconception to think that um, deer are the primary vector for Lyme. And second, that um, that killing off the deer actually can exacerbate the, the situation with Lyme disease. That was an interesting thing because that's one of the motivators for getting rid of the deer. Um, as far as plants, people are concerned about their hostas and their, their vegetables and the things that the deer eat. And there are ways, there are plants to plant that are equally beautiful that, that don't attract deer or that repel deer. Plus there are all kinds of humane strategies to, to manage the interface of humans and deer populations. And uh, there's also something to say that the hunting uh, makes, makes less deer, so the deer have more babies. Uh, apparently they adjust it very directly to conditions. And if there's a greater plenitude of resources for them, uh, then they procreate more. So anyway, this is probably way more information than you ever wanted to hear about deer, but I think it's something to be aware of. This is something in, in my consciousness. It wasn't even in my awareness, actually. And so these things, there are lots of things that happen invisibly behind the scenes that we're not aware of. In any case, uh, what happened was this friend was really, truly paralyzed with grief, happened to tell me about it. It was haunting me to know that I'm in this township where there's the, where this practice is going on. And, and I believe that there are more eff effective practices that could be undertaken. And I also feel that it's not okay to just be killing massive numbers of deer. So 
that's my personal opinion. You may love me or hate me for that, but that's, that's just where I am with it. Anyway, good morning, Dido. Welcome, welcome. So the, the point is that um, I found this information, I shared it with my friend and noticed in my email at like 8.30 this morning that she had already written a bunch of letters and started connecting with the community. And, um, and what I realized is that this is something that I can take action about as well. And I suspect that this is, this is just one thing that is a practice that many of us might not condone or we condone it because we believe it's a necessity in some respect rather than understanding that there are other maybe per, maybe more effective approaches to the situation. Um, so what happened for my friend is that rather than being completely bereft and hopeless and, and feeling at odds with the world and, um, and in great despair, really great despair, what she did was she took action. And this may or may not for her become <clears throat> a major cause. It may, may or not become a place of activism for her, but, but the fact that it was so deeply, deeply heartbreaking to her spurred her to action ultimately when she saw a pathway to, to become active. And I think that we all have this, this responsibility to ourselves as much as to our communities and the world, that when there is something that moves us so profoundly, that we look at ways that we can take action around it. And I can speak for myself. Uh, when I thought of how what we were doing to the planet, it totally broke my heart. Every time I spoke about it, I would be brought to tears. And I felt hopeless and helpless around it. And I've spoken about this before, but this was this this is such an important thing. And so many of us are reevaluating our lives and our 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 lifestyles that it's really important for us to be looking at what is our inspiration. And so for me, this heartbreak around what we were doing to the planet became, the foundation for me for my my mission and purpose and my vision of an eco park and my uh, podcast sustainability now because what I needed to do to be able to to heal and mend my heart was to find solutions to see possibility to find hope and that was something that I was able to do by establishing my podcast and reaching out to people who were doing remarkable things related to sustainability in the world and providing solutions. And so if you, if you happen to be interested in sustainability, and I hope you are because it's critical for all of us, especially at this juncture in the human story, um, our website for the podcast is sustainabilitynow.global. And that's dot global instead of dot com. But please feel free to check it out. And if you're in despair around what's happening in the world, check it out because we have wonderful, wonderful interviews and information from people that are blazing trails for making a difference in the world and and it creating a future for us that that is the vibrant, thriving future we dream of. So my encouragement here is to not give in to the despair or the sense of inadequacy that we can so often have in the face of, of circumstances in the world. And 
instead of of nurturing that despair bring yourself forward to take an action and that's something in you could consider it's in a way it's a selfish act because it serves to heal you it serves to make a difference for you and and consequently as you take action it's going to have an impact in the world it is not true this is one of the biggest myths that we get to uh, disassemble it is not true that we can't do anything about it that's one of the biggest biggest paths to resignation is i can't do anything about it and there's no limit to what one person can do or a group of of intentional individuals collectively can do there's no limit to how much of a difference we can make and so we don't get to be resigned um we get to embrace life embrace the things that we we um we see as needing change and transformation and we get to do that and so we get to do that in a way that is respectful that is honorable that is um life affirming okay we get to do it not by creating opposition but by creating alignment by enrolling others in our our vision and yes there are people you know there's all all kinds of spectrum you and i you might believe that that there should be a deer hunt and i believe that there shouldn't and we may have opposite opinions about this um and there has got to be a place where collectively if we are are living into our highest uh our highest selves that we can find a bridge where we have a um some a, a mutual intention you know the the way to resolve issues or to build bridges is to step above to the next level or the next level or the next level of awareness where there's some commonality between us so um i realized that my stepping out and do, saying this whole thing about um about taking care of the deer and uh humane treatment of animals and vegetarianism or veganism may be um polarizing for some of you i'm not a uh a rabid um vegan in in that i although i don't understand it and i'm saddened by the way that we deal with animals in our culture um i recognize that it's not up to me to make the rules for everybody and that said by raising awareness by i i think collectively in the united states anyway uh we are moving toward a more nature aware a more animal aware a more um expansive consciousness toward other sentient creatures and as such i mean look at look at the movement toward plant based diet look at the movement toward uh, vegetarianism and veganism and and it's mainstreamed now and we get to be considering our choices more consciously um and to be to allow ourselves to be awake to the choices and the things that are just kind of routine the things that we don't question it's kind of like the fish in the water 
the fish doesn't notice the water because that's all that's around them. And I think that there are so many things in our culture that we have through COVID gotten to begin to consider or to be able to see in a way that we never saw before, that we have new moral questions that are posed to us uh, about our environment, about our world, about our lifestyle, about our priorities. And so I encourage you to look at the things in life that break your heart, where you feel utterly and completely paralyzed or par powerless, and look at taking an action in the face of that to, to maybe see where there are wrongs that can be righted to maybe see where there are other positive possibilities to expand your own perspective and your own awareness and, and empower yourself. Give yourself the freedom to recognize and the acknowledgement to recognize that you do make a difference, that you can have an impact and even in the, the doingness, um, moved from inspiration, moving from a place of inspiration, the, the action that you will take in the world will make an impact. And I believe we're here to play this game together. You know, that in, in some grand, grand scheme, none of this matters, right? In some grand scheme, nothing we do, um, nothing we say matters, you know, in the scheme of the cosmos, <clears throat> human, human beings don't even register as a blip. However, as human beings manifest here, or as, as spirit or consciousness manifest here now as human beings, we get to decide how we're going to play this game and what kinds of roles we're going to fill on this stage of life and, and um, consciousness. And so if we choose to engage in the world, if we want to get the most juice out of this remarkable game that we're playing or these roles, then, then why not play a game that, that gives you energy and vitality and life and a sense of purpose and meaning within that grander context? You know, so it's interesting when we talk about these different dimensions of awareness, you know, we take ourselves very seriously as human beings, and we think that what we're doing is important. And in the in the context of the cosmos, we're a speck, the whole planet is a speck. And, and so in one respect, uh, life the meaning that we that life has is the meaning we ascribe to it. It's not that that's truth, because in the grander scheme of things, we really don't know how we fit in at all. And so, ironically, I'm saying that we nothing we say or do, do nothing we say or do matters. On the other side of the coin, I'm, at the same time, I'm saying you can make a difference. And so, it's all a matter of context. And, um, and we get to live in both. You know, when we, when we need to get some perspective, we get to jump out to the cosmic perspective to see that all of this <clears throat> is most likely empty and meaningless. And when we bring it into a personal context, we can recognize that we are the meaning makers. And when, when something touches us so deeply, 
that is a call from your consciousness in this manifestation from your heart to to point you towards your purpose and your direction and to invite you to rise to the calling of your soul that that in this manifestation in this moment is is singing to you uh the the melody and and the harmonies that you came here to resonate with so this is this is just an opportunity for you to look at at the choices look at the places in your life where you feel resignation and you feel like you couldn't make a difference but it your heart is broken by by this thing this element and rise to it rise to it look at how you can take action take it, it take a look at it face on and um and allow that to propel you into a fulfillment that that you might not otherwise have and we get to do it in a way where we elevate ourselves and those around us rather than creating opposition and and conflict so that's the challenge and um coming into this season of thanksgiving uh this is an opportunity for us to give thanks to give thanks for the fact that we can make a difference to give thanks for those who do in this context obviously you know that that one voice can can matter and so um embrace the paradox and uh take action and find your find your strength find your voice find your passion because this is this is a time where we need that more than ever so with that that's it for today i'm mira rubin this is the core connection and i go live every weekday morning on the enlightened world network facebook page i so appreciate you being with me and spending this time and i acknowledge you for your courage to ask the hard questions and explore the dynamics that each of us have in our human experience and your commitment to growth and transformation so so much love to you until next time